Welcome back, viewers. Today, we will be testing Eller's Correlation Cycle Indicator. But before we do, if you have not watched my first video and the videos after that, you need to go do that right now. Here at the Academy of Forex, we are building the best trading system possible as a team. And as a team, we will all profit from it when we are done. You can find a link to the first video down in the description below. You can also find a link to our Discord server. So that way we can all discuss testing indicators and building our trading system. And lastly, you can find a link below to TradingView. If you sign up for a paid account, you will save a little bit of money using the link below. All right, as I said, today we will be testing Eller's Correlation Cycle Indicator. But before we do, I wanted to put the indicator scoreboard up for everyone to see. So to date, we have tested 106 indicators. And out of those 106 indicators, 40 of them have been winners, which means that they have met or exceeded the 60% win-loss ratio threshold that we have set for them. The best ones so far were able to achieve a 100% win rate. Now you need to go back and watch those videos to understand the context of how they were able to achieve that. But as we are working on building the best trading system possible, you could take any one of those 40 indicators and get out there and start potentially profitably trading the markets with them now. So go back and watch those videos, make a list of those indicators, and get out there and see what you can do with them. But stick with us here as we work on maximizing your trading profits. All right. So today's indicator is the Eller's Correlation Cycle Indicator. It is a TradingView member created indicator, uh, like most of the ones that we have been testing recently. And so there will be a link below in the description to uh, this particular indicator on TradingView. Um, it's a pretty simple setup. I mean, the indicator itself isn't, uh, it's not a whole lot going on with it. Um, John Ellers, uh, is who created this indicator and, uh, he has a whole list, of a whole bunch of different indicators and a lot of them, uh, go together um, in kind of a whole trading system or, um, you know, work in a specific combinations of indicators. And so, um, yeah, I mean, all in all, the big picture is that a lot of his indicators are meant to be used with other indicators that he created. But that's not to say that we can't pick out specific indicators, test them, and see what we can get out of them. Um, and if, you know, they're good enough, then we can put them on the list, uh, to move on and to, um, possibly become part of, uh, our finished trading system once we get there. And so, um, yeah, like I said, the setup on it is pretty simple. It's basically a two line cross. Um, one of the lines here does have... Um, it is a color changing line and so but eh, that's neither here nor there basically what we're looking for is the cross to take place between the colored line and the black line now um, if you notice here up on the price action the bars uh, the the creator of the indicator made it to where the bars changed colors in um, accordance to uh, whether or not the indicator was uh, reading a long or a short. And so that's why you see these long spans of green and long spans of red. 
I'm personally not a fan of indicators that do that. Um, I feel like even though um, the, the individual candle colors and price action don't make up a huge part of the overall decision of taking a trade, um, no doubt they definitely play a role. And so I prefer to be able to see the um, normal colors of the candles, whether or not they were green or red, and so on. I feel like that, you know, helps to paint a picture of what's going on um, in that particular pair, kind of overall. And so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go in and turn off the bar color. Um, I can look here at the bottom and clearly see when a um, cross takes place. And so uh, that's pretty simple. Uh, another thing I'm going to do here, and this is just something that I prefer to do for you know, whatever reason, is change those two colors that coincide with the same colors that I use on the candles above. Again, this is just my preference. It's just how I do it. Um, something about it, I just like it all to, you know, kind of be clean and tidy and matching up together. And so, uh, beyond that, like I said, I might actually go in and... Yeah, there we go bumped up the uh, the line weight on the different lines so that way it's a little bit clearer to see as well and so um, yeah like I said pretty simple we're just looking for the cross of the two lines when they do we'll either um, take that as a long signal or a short signal and so let's get on with the testing process here all right looks like we picked up a long signal there on that one it did uh give us a pretty hefty red candle there it did not hit the 150 pips before it appears to be turning around going to the upside which it did giving us first trade and first win so so far so good we will play it out here keep on plugging along there we go we picked up a short unfortunately well, where did it take place took place on this candle so actually it looks like we picked up another win right there on that one keep moving along here that one unfortunately made a um, really bad move right there let's see so let's check this out. I'm going to put that there, but I'm actually going to measure it out here real quick to see if it came down and it did not. Wow. That's surprising. Let's see. So this was it. That was the green signal right there. So entry on that one. And so it didn't quite stop us out. And then it turned around and actually ran up on us. So, surprise, surprise, we actually squeezed, went out on that one. Now, we picked up a short right there. And that one definitely did not work out in our favor. Alright. You can see here. Price action is pushing up. Let's see what it's going to do. Looks like it's starting to weaken in this area. Looks like it's had a lot of resistance up here towards the top. 
I'm not sure how well we could pick up any kind of divergent signals from this. Haven't really played with it much. But it does seem like it's uh so this is one thing that I do notice about it. See how it pushed up here, right in this area here. You can see that it this uh, movement up peaked out right there. And then you can see that it's starting to slope heavily downward as we run into this zone right here. And um, it appears that that tends to be a, um, a pretty regular sign that the indicator is running uh, that the price action is is running out of momentum and so I've seen it happen a few times back here where it did the same thing where it peaked out and considering how we're right up against a uh, really strong area of um, of resistance here it's possible that we are going to see a push to the downside now um, again I've, I've this isn't you know tested yet it's just something that I've observed the little bit of time that I've played with it so let's see what happens just out of curiosity it appears that the indicator is telling us that it has lost momentum and it is now sloping heavily to the downside Let's see what it does. And there we have it. And so this is uh, this is a prime example of kind of the thought process that I use as I am testing indicators and just you know kind of keeping an eye out for different things to kind of see see what happens. And so uh, we see there that. Um, you know, we noticed something that was happening frequently. Uh, we uh, put it to the test a little bit there, and it did not work out in our favor. And so, um, it's not necessarily that um, we couldn't, uh, you know, put that to the test more, but um, at the moment, it's uh, it's questionable here. It does appear that we are getting some divergence reading here. Again, this is no guarantee. Just kind of playing around and keeping our eye out with other aspects of what this indicator can tell us. Um, it's great that we're testing the overall um, normal function of the indicator but you should also always keep your eye out for whether or not um, and, and again this is something that we've discussed in the discord server we should be keeping our eye out on whether or not um, it can make a good exit indicator whether or not um, you know it reads momentum and volatility volume well um, in my opinion whether or not um, you know it reads other things like um, the cycles of a move or even um, whether or not it gives us a decent divergence um, you know kind of on, on a regular basis stuff like that keep an eye out for it and then we can uh, put it into categories you know as we move on and so all right let's play it out here and see what happens there we go Here is Let's see if we can get that push. There it goes finally. So we had the short that started there on this one. There. It did not stop us out. And so we picked up another win there heavy push down um, you know some divergence taking place there but it's not 
really clear on this indicator. We'll keep plugging along here. See price action has made a strong move down. And starting to make a curl here. That is a sign that uh, price action is weakening on this downward move. Let's hit um, an area here, a zone with a lot of support and resistance kind of all coming together. And so play it out a little bit here and see what happens. It's really bouncing along that that area there. It's it's trying hard. Did pick up a loss though. Came back down for a short. Um, indicators telling us that it is going to break below this zone that it keeps bouncing off of. And so let's see what happens. Let's see if it uh, has the ability to Actually dropped a sorry it's playing around with the lines here I think I actually dropped one in there randomly by mistake all right so we got a short signal here at this point where it's tested a few times let's see if it can in fact break down below that area make any kind of significant move and it was not able to do it broke below it for a moment did not give us our take profit came up um, giving us a long signal there and fell straight back out on it let's see where did we get the signal there might have squeezed out I think we did yep so we squeezed out a win just barely on that one before it dropped out on us. You can see it came down, finally able to get a clean break below this zone here. Came back up, retested it, is now pushing its way back down. It's usually a really good sign that we're going to get um, somewhat of a downward movement now. We are also getting a short signal here. So let's play it out a little bit and see what happens. And there it goes. It was able to finally make that strong movement downward. So playing along here. Again, John Ellers, a uh, creator of this indicator it's made a lot of other indicators, a lot of really good indicators. And so um, I'd be surprised if this one isn't able to meet the 60%. Um, I have a pretty good confidence that it's going to be a, a significant indicator. I mean, it, it's, you know, not going to be, you know, amazing, immaculate, um, you know, but I, I am fairly confident that it's definitely going to meet our 60% criteria. And so, um, price action movement again, we've had this long push down, we've had this uh, moment of exhaustion here, a strong engulfing green, green candle here, the slight pullback. Um, we've also gotten the uh, green light here for a long signal on our indicator. Uh, this is a pretty decent setup. You see this one a lot also. 
And so there's a, a relatively good chance that this is going to uh, pop up some more and at least get to the first take profit. I did. The question is, did it stop us out on that move down there? Let's see. I don't think it did. But let's measure it out. Try that again. Ooh, it is really close. Did not. It was super close. But yeah, you see... Um, and here is a really good example of um, what I would consider to be some market manipulation. So you see here a really clean pattern. Our indicator gave us the green light to go uh, long. There's no reason at all why this couldn't have taken off with some good conviction. Um, but right as everybody, um, I mean, most normal traders would have put their entries right in this area. And so you see this candle and this candle both came up into this little zone right here. Getting a bunch of people in on the long side. And um, a lot of people who run really tight stops would have put their stop right here in this area right underneath this swing right here and you see here price action came up got a whole bunch of people in for the long ride up with a lot of good conviction everybody's like yes that's you know this thing's gonna take off it bombed out with this massive engulfing red candle here wiping out all kinds of stops for those people who keep real tight stops um, and a lot of people do because um, make no mistake that a stop like this, <laughs> that's that's a scary stop. That's a lot of ground there. Let's see. That is 300 pips. Um, you know, that's that's scary. That's a, a lot of area to um, watch your account go negative before it comes down and hits that that stop. And so most most normal people would have had it right in this area i mean even with the numbers that we use that would have been right at the 150 marker right there that is a a normal stop um, zone and you see that price manipulation came down bam stopped out a whole bunch of people right there that massive red candle before they turned it around and shot it right back up and so something that you have to watch out for is um, you know price manipulation like that you need to learn not to be in the areas that massive groups of other people are in um, sometimes it's easier to take a risk and get in a little bit earlier so your stops aren't quite in the same spot and your entries aren't quite in the same spot or get in a little bit later waiting for a little bit more confirmation before entering the trade. And so we would have been good. We got that signal right there. Uh, we would have been um, predicting this move instead of waiting for confirmation necessarily and so um, sometimes that is the better move to make because you don't wait so long that you miss a lot of the move but you also um, you know get in at an area that you're not being hunted quite as much as other people all right price action came up it bounced off that area again this is what i talked about in the last video um you know these areas of support and resistance are not end all be all you definitely shouldn't trade off of them and only them but um you know if you're ignoring these areas 
um, you know, you do so at your own risk. I uh, suspected this one was going to have issues, so it came down. Came down, give us a short right there. That really didn't look like it was going to make a lot of movement downward. I mean, that's just not a lot of move up here for it to really have a massive pullback that far. And so again, you get, um, you know, what I would call some manipulation of the market where uh, they bring price action up. They pull this way, way back whole bunch of people are sitting and watching this price action and thinking to themselves oh yeah this is definitely going down now it's going to come back down and retest this area down here where it um you know bounced a few times and so um they all jumped in and then they turned around and ran it right back up and so Let's see. There we go. Now they're getting all kinds of fake outs on us. Right at the top of that move. There was a signal to go long. And they turned around and dropped it right back out. And now at this point, it's made two attempts to the upside. It's making the strong movement down. It's kind of breaking through this little bit of area of support and resistance here. It's giving us a short signal. Um, if I had to guess, I'd say this one's probably going to go ahead and, and make its way back down, um, giving us a winning trade. Could be wrong, but that would be my guess if I had to make one. And there you go. So it was finally able to... Uh, to make that move down let's measure this out we did not get stopped out tried to uh, put a lot of pressure on us but we had a, a wide enough stop on it that it was able to exhaust itself in that pullback and then drop back down giving us take profit we're almost to the end of the year now it's bouncing along the zone right here. Again, here's a prime example of how these support and resistance areas work. I mean, you can't deny the fact that the price action has reaction to these areas. And so that is the end of the year there. Let's see. Yeah, it called it right on the new year and so nope we would not have taken that one all right so there we have it end of the year let's count them up here let's see what we get out of this indicator all right one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve thirteen so we have 13 trades all together and we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. 8 winning trades. And so uh, this one meets the 60% criteria. Uh, only barely edged it in there. Uh, I wish it wasn't quite as jerky as it is. Um, it seems like it, it's a little premature sometimes getting us in and out of areas. Um, I don't think it would make a good exit indicator. Doesn't really seem like it doesn't really seem like it, it gives us um, exits at really decent times it's a little too quick for an exit indicator and so we need anytime 
you know, anytime we are looking at an exit indicator, we definitely need something that gives us a little bit more breathing room and um, something that doesn't react quite so quickly. Um, entry indicators a little bit different. We want something that reacts a little bit quicker and doesn't wait quite as long. And so um, an entry indicator, definitely exits, not so much momentum, maybe. I'm gonna put it on momentum, volatility slash volume. Um, and also under divergence. And uh, and yeah, we'll tinker around with it later on and see what we can get out of it. But video is getting a little long, so I'm gonna go ahead and end it here. We'll move on to the next indicator from here. If you have not already, like this video, comment below, subscribe to the channel, and turn on the bell notification so that way you are notified anytime I post a new video. As part of the team, it's important that you are seeing the new videos as they come out so you know what it is that we are discussing and what indicators we are testing, have tested, and have not tested. Also, like usual, there is a link below in the description to the Discord server. You can join us on Discord so that way we can further discuss the indicators and have discussions as we move forward building our trading system. And lastly, like usual, there is a link below to TradingView. If you like what you see whenever I use TradingView and you are interested in signing up for TradingView, if you use the link below and sign up for a paid account, you will save a little bit of money. So, all right, everybody, I will see you.